from the pandemic to navigating changes in the delivery system of their education, these students have endured and overcome significant obstacles. Despite everything life has thrown at them, they have continued to excel in the classroom and serve their community with grace, pride, and honor. I am honored and humbled to be able to call myself their assistant principal. I would like to offer my compliments to all the parents and guardians for the support and guidance you have provided these young adults. We are honored you could join us this afternoon for this special occasion. Today, we celebrate you as well. When asked who they wanted to speak to their induction ceremony, our executive officers quickly responded with Ms. Stearns. Ms. Stearns teaches English at Midland High School. She was also a coach, um, the lead of many committees at MHS, a graduate of Midland High School, class of 1989, and a parent of two Midland High alum, both of whom were also MHS members. She eats, breathes, and sleeps Midland High School. Please help me welcome Miss Katie Stearns. Good afternoon, parents, guardians, grandparents, we have any other family, friends, Midland High staff, I see you, I see you, and especially you, Emily, Riley, Maya, and Haley, our new NHS inductees. As Mrs. Oh, sorry, it is my honor to be here and I'm humbled to be your speaker as Ms. Beeson Stager's understudy. She, that's okay, she's here with us in spirit. As I was preparing for today's speech and celebration, I kept coming back to the message that I shared last spring. Please bear with me as I share those same thoughts with you all today, but these are especially for Emily, Riley, Maya, and Haley. Besides Emily, I have the best neighbors, Bill and Nina. <laughs> Bill and Nina, who moved to Midland in 2017 from downstate. When I asked them why they moved up here, they said they wanted to live up north. I thought to myself, and I almost asked, did you also buy a place in Traverse City too? Now I've lived in Midland for almost all of my life, but over the past five years, it's been so much fun watching them experience Midland and see the town through their new and excited eyes. They would come over uh, after heading out and say, Katie, we've just been to the farmer's market. Have you been? It's wonderful. Katie, we just toured Dow Gardens. Have you been? It's wonderful. Katie, have you seen a show? Katie, hey, Katie, have you seen a show at the Center for the Arts? We just did. Wow, what a wonderful venue. And I would chuckle and say, why yes, I have been there before. And yes, they are all very lovely. But my favorite time is when they experience the trish. They were fascinated by this structure. And anytime they have people come to visit, they head out and show them the trish. Now I remember when the church was constructed, and I didn't really think that much about it. But over the past several years, I have spent a lot of time at the church, and it really is iconic and such a unique spot for our community. In fact, I'll have people say, oh, you're from Midland? You have that cool bridge thing. And I'm like, yes, yes, we do. Okay, Mrs. Dunn, where are you going with this? Let me bring you back to Bill and Nina and the church. Today, you are officially recognized as a member of the 101-year-old society established according to their website to quote elevate the values of scholarship service leadership and character four impressive traits in and of themselves yet you have shown your dedication to all four and have been selected to the Lunheim chapter these traits remind me of the trish and your next journey okay but mrs stearns those are four traits and the trish literally has the root what's the root try thank you meaning three i know Bear with me. I see each of the bridges of the Tridge as a great metaphor for the three values, for three of the values of NHS. Bridge number one being scholarship. I want to commend you on your hard work so far. You take hard classes, I know you stayed up late, balanced your academics, and earned impressive grades. Keep taking that bridge to continue to work hard, challenge yourself, ask your teachers questions, be curious, research, wonder, and continue on the bridge of knowledge and scholarship. No matter where your post high school bridge takes you, be a lifelong learner and walk or run on that scholarship bridge for your lifetime. 
Bridge number two is service. I hope your service and volunteering wasn't just a quote, get into NHS. This bridge is where you're able to expand that service, extend yourself, and learn about people and organizations that need help. This is the bridge that will take you to more service opportunities that will not only enrich your life, but the lives of others. Bridge number three is leadership. Leadership looks many different ways. Some of you are very visible leaders, maybe in the student section, in the band, orchestra, or choir. In the classroom, you may be the first to raise your hand, organize a group, or volunteer to share. However, some of you are leaders by subtle example, quiet patience, and intellect that is shown in not so flashy ways. Use bridge number three to continue to lead, by, but also be willing to follow and learn from other leaders in your life. <coughs> Okay, Ms. Stearns, you've now taken us on bridge number one to the softball fields and the trails to the nature center. Bridge number two to the playground, that dog situation running thing, <laughs> and the family statue. And bridge number three to the farmer's market and rail trail area. But there's a fourth value for NHS, character. Where does that fit? For me, character is the benches in the middle of the trench where people sit, rest, chat, look over the railings, contemplate, read, wonder, cry, laugh, and watch the water below. I believe that for you, character should be the center that holds the other three bridges together. Stay true to yourself, but be willing to sit and rest and chat with many different people. Look over the various railings that you come to and contemplate, read, wonder, cry, laugh, and watch the water below you. We know the waters of the Titawasi can be fast and furious and a little too high and rough but we also know it can be slow and calm and steady. Life will be like that for you as well and won't always be easy, but with your strong center of character, you will persevere through the rough waters. So celebrate the bridges that got you here today, but I encourage you to be like Bill and Nina. Explore, enjoy, share, and keep learning. Congratulations and be proud. Thank you. Stearns. Ms. Stearns, members of the faculty, parents, and students, welcome to the Fall 2022 National Honor Society Induction Ceremony. We are gathered here to formally recognize those students who have been selected by the faculty of our school for successfully completing their candidacy and are being inducted as new members of our NHS chapter. For current members and those former members who may be among our guests, we hope this will serve to remind you of the standards of excellence you too are charged with maintaining as members of the nation's oldest, largest, and most prestigious student organization program. Today's ceremony indicates the continuing emphasis on excellence that we represent for our school and community. Throughout the year, members of our chapter serve as role models for other students. In addition to the strong academic records which establish the eligibility for membership, our chapter members are leaders in many student organizations and we serve our, our school and community through many activities. We are proud of our hard work and of accomplishments. We welcome and challenge these new members who bring new energy and support of our continuing work as NHS members. It is at this time that we proclaim to all in attendance that members of the Chemic Chapter of the National Honor Society has been earned by these candidates through the effective demonstration of the four qualities that serve as standards for the society. Members of the chapter will now review these qualities for the candidates. We begin with scholarship. Hi, my name is Barack Adams and I am this year's NHS treasurer. I will be talking about the NHS pillar of scholarship. Scholarship denotes a commitment to learning. A student is willing to spend hours in reading and study, knowing the lasting benefits of a well-cultivated mind. We should continue to learn even when formal education has ended, for human education ends only with the end of life. Knowledge is one great element in life, which leads to the highest success, and it can be acquired in only one way, through diligence and effort. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past, the torch guiding us to, the, to understand the present, and the light that illuminates the future. Candidates have the opportunity to change, in, 
continually expand their work, their world through the opportunities inherent in scholarship. This is illustrated through Clay P. Bedford's claim, you can teach a student a lesson for a day, but you can teach him to learn by creating curiosity. He will continue the learning process for as long as he lives. My name is Andrew Steger, and I am this year's NHS Vice President. I will be talking about the NHS pillar of service. Service can be established in the routine of the day's work where many opportunities arise to help others both at school and within the community. A willingness to work for the benefit of those in need without monetary compensation or public recognition is the quality we seek in both our membership and promote for the entire student body. We are committed to volunteering our time and talents to the creation of a better tomorrow. As Martin Luther King Jr. once said, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? <laughs> My name is Cole Carpenter, and I am this year's NHS president. I will be talking about the NHS pillar of leadership. Leadership should exert a wholesome influence on the school. In taking initiative in the classroom and in school activities, the real leader strives to train and aid others to reach their common goals of success. The price of leadership is sacrifice, the willingness to yield one's personal interests for the interests of others. A leader has self-confidence and will go forward when others hesitate. No matter what power and resources may exist in a school, community, or nation, they are ineffectual without the guidance of a wise leader. Leadership is always needed, thus to lead is a meaningful and substantive charge to each of our members. As Rosalind Carter once said, a leader takes people where they want to go. A great leader takes people not necessarily where they want to go, but where they ought to be. Morgan Huffy, and I am one of this year's NHS secretaries. I will be talking about the NHS pillar of character. Character, character is the force within the individual that distinguishes each person from others. It creates for each of us our individuality, our goodness. It is that without which no one can respect oneself, nor hope to attain the respect of others. It is the force of character that guides one through life, and once developed, grows steadily within. Character is achieved and not received. It is the product of constant thought and action, the daily striving to make the right choice. The problem of character is the problem of self-control. We must be in reality what we wish to appear to others, to be rather than to seem. By demonstrating such qualities as respect, responsibility, trustworthiness, fairness, caring, and citizenship, we may hope to prove by example that we value character. As Heraclitus of Ephesus once said, good character is not formed in a week or a month. It is created little by little, day by day. Protracted and patient effort is needed to develop good character.
My name is Ms. Susan, and I'm one of the NHS advisors. And I'm Ms. Penalty, I'm the other NHS advisor. And at this time, we would like to honor our existing members of the Chemic Chapter Class of 2023. Will you all please stand when we call your name and hold your applause until the end? Henry Adams. Brock Adams. Lauren Applegate. Casey Bauer. Alejandra Brennis. Andrew Brennis. Anthony Brennis. Caleb Brown. Emma Bushman. Cole Carpenter. Jason Davenport. Maria Eagle. Emily Flory. Cheryl Fritz. Nathan Gamrell. Michael Graham. Abigail Goodmanson. Stephen Hackbar. Benjamin Haney. Dalen Harris. Janelle Harris. Alyssa Hebert. Mallory Hollenbeck. Morgan Hussey, Madeline J, Jonathan Jenkins, Emily Krenzlein, Bailey McKeever, <coughs> Molly Maloney, Caitlin Marco, Natalie Marsh, Olivia McMath, Rachel Mecca, Brianna Moline, Hannah Monville, Ainsley Newcomb, Chloe Nieto, Aiden O'Malley, Georgia Palmer, Jocelyn Hardell, Aiden Porritt, Samuel Ringgold, Henry Saban, Alexander Savinsky, Andrew Sager, Ellie Stevens, Joshua, Jocelyn Silksa, Isabel, Isabella Sullivan, Lauren Swanson, <coughs> Chloe Vandenbosch, Eric White, and Gracie Willett. <laughs> induction ceremony will be for all our new members in attendance today. At this time, we will call the names of the new members to come forward for the candle lighting ceremony and to recite the membership pledge. Following the pledge, you will also receive your membership certificate and pin. As your name is called, please come forward. Emily Jenkins. Riley Penwell. Maya Shelton. And Haley Sweeney. Year's NHS secretaries. At this time, will all members in attendance please um, rise? Raise your right hand and repeat the pledge. Any members that go for a year as well? The audience can follow um, the text that's printed in your program. Please join me in reciting the pledge. I pledge to uphold the high purpose of the National Honor Society to which I have been selected. 
Stearns to receive your certificate and pen. Once again, in applauding all of those new to Honor Society this year. Thank you all for attending our 2022 Fall NHS Induction Ceremony.